I uh, welcome the appointment of Chris Evans to the role. Uh, he has so much experience in Parliament and in uh, civil society. He will be extraordinary. Why is modern slavery a an issue for us? Well, over 40 million people are in modern slavery throughout the world and many are in Australia. While we don't have exact numbers uh, on prevalence in Australia, um, some organisations say there are 40,000 people living in modern slavery in Australia, others say 2,000. Uh, the Australian Institute of Criminology says that only one in five people are ever identified. So it is an issue that is under the radar. At my organisation, Anti-Slavery Australia, we are providing direct legal representation to over 400 people. So it is ha something that's happening in every state and territory in Australia. And what it is, is about control. It's about taking away a person's uh, humanity in, in some way by using coercion, threat and deception to take away their ability to be able to stop work or leave the place that they're working. And this kind of exploitation is driven, driven by um, either commercial gain or personal gratification. Is this something that is, you know, mostly affecting um, the immigrant community or how really widespread is this issue in Australia? It's a really interesting um, observation and initially um, when we first started to think about trafficking and slavery, it, it was thought to be something that would affect people coming into Australia, being trafficked into Australia from overseas. But what we've seen is that there are different patterns emerging. And while people in Australia on temporary visas can be vulnerable, we also know that Australian citizens and residents can also be vulnerable. And you know, when we think about that, um, it's important to think about the breadth of modern slavery. So, you know, it includes slavery, servitude, forced labour and forced marriage. And most reports of modern slavery are in the forced marriage area and they typically affect young Australian citizens and residents. The new commissioner's position uh, is aimed at combating slavery here in Australia and overseas. How do you think he will work with his counterparts in other countries uh, to, to tackle the issue? Mm. Well, we do have an Australian ambassador uh, to, to address modern slavery within the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. So I would imagine the new commissioner will work closely with the ambassador and there will be um, initiatives overseas as well. But uh, I think the focus is on Australia and implementing initiatives in Australia to ensure we have a stronger and a better response to modern slavery, that we prevent modern slavery and support survivors. You've been working in this space for, yep. for quite some time. Is there a case or a story that really stands out to you? And how would you like to see the new commissioner tackle some of those problems? There are so many cases and you're right, I have been working in, in the area for over 20 years and, you know, I've been providing legal advice during that time. You know, anti-slavery has grown and there are others who are doing that more on a day-to-day -day basis, but I, you know, keep my um, toe in, so to speak. But, you know, I think one of the very first cases that I was involved with involved a woman who was sexually exploited we were attempting to apply for compensation for her. She was a victim of crime, exploited in more than one Australian state. And we found during that process that it, we do need to have a better, a better way of providing recognition and compensation to people in modern slavery in Australia. Because what's happening is that we have eight different states and territories they each have their own statutory compensation scheme and they're all terribly different. So in one state, uh, the outcome could be that a person is given $50,000. In another state, it might be 10. The schemes are different. There are different crimes that are recognised. None of them are really fit for purpose. And remembering that modern slavery the crimes we're speaking about are in the Commonwealth Criminal Code, and that is federal legislation. So it makes really good sense 
to have a national compensation scheme. That would have made a difference to our client back in the day where we had to make two different applications in different states. And having one scheme that applied throughout Australia fairly would make a huge difference to survivors.